a U.S. national championship. This year, it is the first stop on the road to the Atlanta Olympic Games. Since the last Olympics, three gymnasts have earned the title of U.S. champion. The youngest ever, Dominique Mochianu. The history maker, Dominique Dawes. And the most decorated of them all, Shannon Miller. Shannon came out of nowhere to become America's greatest. Then, she dominated the world for two years. Even though injuries and age caught up with her. Miller's focus never wavered. And in the first round of this championship, she is the leader. But a tendon problem continues to plague her. Can determination overcome the pain for Shannon Miller? Dominique Dawes, she swept the championships when she was only 17. Now, just one month before her second Olympics, her biggest challenge may be her focus. In step Dominique Mochianu. She made her victory last year appear effortless. After compulsories, she trails behind veteran Shannon Miller. Unlike her rival, she has yet to write her Olympic history. But first, there is the pressure of defending a national title. We're in Knoxville, Tennessee, along the shores of the Tennessee River. Tennessee celebrates its 200th birthday this year. It is known as the volunteer state, of course, for the thousands of Tennesseans who went to fight the Mexican-American War. Today, we welcome you to the Thompson Bowling Arena, the site of the 1996 U.S. National Gymnastics Championships. Hi everybody, I'm John Tesh with a little more than a month to go before the Atlanta Olympic Games. We find ourselves once again with a young lady who has already attained superstar status. She is on the cover of countless sports magazines. She has been on the cover of fashion magazines. And now this, her own autobiography at the tender age of 14, Dominique Mochianu, an American champion. So there is pressure that's been brought to bear by herself by people like us, and by that road to Atlanta. I want to bring in one of our expert commentators, Elfie Schlegel. Elfie, let's talk about the state of Dominique. Well, John, she became the darling when she won the national championships last year, the youngest ever. She then went on to become the highest ranked American at the world championships, adding more credibility to her gymnastics. So can she win here today? Absolutely, but the pressure is enormous. Dominique has to deal with not only defending her title, but making the U.S. Olympic team and living up to the star that she's become. All right, Elfie, thank you. Let's go over to Tim Daggett for a moment. Tim, years ago it was thought that female gymnasts were too old at 19, but no more. Well, that's exactly right, John. Four years ago, everyone was asking the question, can the veterans, Dawes, Miller, and Strzok, can they hold on? Well, just a few weeks out from the Olympic Games, at this point in time, they all have a very good shot. The person who's had the most criticism, the most naysayers along the road, has been Shannon Miller. Well, she's come out strong, and she has got something to prove. And the women are completing their warm-ups. Nice Shannon Rebound on the balance beam. And, the landing. Let's go. and Steve Nuno always Rebound. coaching. You know, John, you get the feeling with the tension in the air that these are the Olympic trials. In fact, the national championships are just the first step to the Olympic trials and then ultimately to the Atlanta Olympics. Shannon, the most decorated American gymnast in history. And there's the man, Bella Caroli, who has seemed so far, Tim Daggett, just to be frantic as he finishes up warm-ups yeah, warm with his protege, uh, Dominic Mociano. Yes. Exactly right, John. It is almost frenzied out here on the floor. We usually don't see Bella <laughs> huffing and puffing and running around like this. There's a lot on the line. There she is, Dominique Mochianu, still in her warm-ups. Uh, you know, Bella's gymnasts have won eight U.S. all-around crowns, so Good. he definitely knows Good. how to Stay do it. it. Good. Stay but with, with this little Just one, like he has very strong. Right. been very worried 
that maybe the media attention, as we said at the top of the show, was going to be too much. Yeah, every request for any sort of media appearance goes right through Bella and Marta. Now here's J.C. Phelps as she completes her warm-ups for her first routine, which will be on the uneven parallel bar. Here's a coach who has to be feeling very good at this point in time about her athletes, J.C. Phelps and Amanda, Amanda Borden. Both of them very focused for this competition, very ready. Compared to the other athletes, though, she has very limited experience. JC burst onto the scene at the 1994 World Championships and probably had the best rookie appearance of any athlete at a world competition, the first ever. She was phenomenal there. And came very close to quitting back in 1993. Another former national champion, Dominique Dawes, will also perform on the uneven bars. And, uh, she, of course, has her sights on her second Olympic game. She is, however, 10th after the compulsory. She had some serious problems. Terrible competition in the compulsories. And you know something, John, after this morning's practice, I have a lot of questions. In fact, I'm pretty worried about her performance here this evening. I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Well, you know, Elfie, if you remember back to 1992 and the trials there, she did a little bit of the same thing. All right, the standings after the compulsions, you see Shannon and Dominique, one, two, followed by J.C. Phelps and Kerry Strug down there in fifth place, Amanda Borden in fourth. Our first competitor that we're going to see today is going to be Shannon Miller on the balance beam. Good. Okay, Peggy, we're going to go. And you'll always hear, right in her ear, her coach, Steve Nuno. Now, although she's leading Shannon, after the compulsories, Shannon told me that optional, she was a little bit more concerned about this event because it puts a little bit more pressure on her wrist. She is a crowd favorite here, incredible on this event. She won a gold medal at the 94 World Championships on the balance beam. And a silver medal, of course, at the 92 games. A little something funny happening in that move. Yeah, it's it's almost like just a little bit of nerves, and we don't see that from Shannon, just a slight correction in that handstand. Now remember, at last year's national championships, Shannon fell off this event. Here's a new move. Her chances to compete in the Olympics appeared in jeopardy when she dislocated her left elbow, and doctors had to put in a micro screw to repair it. And, oh. Oh. and she is off the beam, which will be a major deduction. Major deduction, 0.5. Uh, and last year fell on the same series, only she had three layouts. Big, big mistake. You know, Elfie, for now. so long, Shannon has been considered That's such a rock in a competition, especially right. on the balance beam, but she has really struggled as of late. We've also heard many gymnasts say they prefer not to start on the balance beam. This is an event that can really make or break your competition, and in this case, it doesn't bode well for Shannon Miller. Well, she's got to shake it off now and prepare for her Strong dismount. Lift. Strong landing now. Stick it. Now bring it up. Bring it up tall. And stick. And stick. Stick. Yeah! So Shannon Miller completes her balance beam, and uh, she can't be happy with that. No, she's definitely not happy with that. A fall, anytime yeah, you have a fall. The big stuff, you know? You know? Okay, well, that's what you came here to do. Do all the skills. You get them all in. Now let's go for it, okay? Well, We're you know what Steve it. is talking yeah, about is she's floor, adding some new elements up, throughout okay? the meet, and she made all the new stuff, but here's something she's been doing forever, and she's just a little bit off, and there is no way to hold on. Well, she tried to, to pull it back there for a while, then she finally just gave up and knew she was off. Let's go. Ready? Ooh, her score a 9-3. That's not the kind of score that's going to win a national championship. Dominique Morciano is chasing her. She's next. Okay. Very important. Very, very important. Yes. Very important. 1993 national champion Shannon Miller has completed her first event in that 9-3 on beam. That's a score she'd like to have back. Up next, Shannon's former training partner, Carrie Strug. And Bella once again working on the vault area there to prepare things for his other protege. Carrie, of course, a two-time Olympian or hoping to be a second-time Olympian. This was a big year so far for Carrie, winning her first major international event at the American Cup. She's starting on a very strong apparatus for Carrie. 
Yeah, she won this event at the 91 and 92 U.S. Championships. Her first vault. Oh, big step. <laughs> way, way too much rotation on that. Characteristic of Carrie Strug, unfortunately. Huh? It was good. We was good. Stay hollow with it on the second. And she always. Big repulsion. Second gonna be good, but stay with it. Nice. Y you know what Bell is talking about there. Huh? See, she's planning to do a more difficult vault where you need more power. And this one, you can see right here, she definitely has a tremendous amount of push off the horse. She's way in the air. Too much rotation for this vault. We should explain this. The women in this competition get two vaults, so you are allowed to keep the higher score. That 9.625 she owns right now, if she can do a better performance this time, she'll get that score. John, as Tim said, she's planning to do a much more difficult vault. This one has a start value of 10.0. She'll need that extra power. Oh! Much, much better second vault. I don't know why she didn't throw that the first time around. That's a great vault. Lots of power. The first vault, she leaves the horse and she does a half twist. This one, she adds a complete full twist to that. One and a half twist. Gets her arms out to the side and just that small hop to the landing, but a really strong start for Carrie Strug. Remember uh, four years ago, a 9.825, so a good score for that second vault at 14, the youngest American she was representing the U.S. at the, at the 92 Olympics. And now we fast forward five years to age 19, Amanda Borden, who is getting ready for her bar routine. Every bit of it. She was fourth after the compulsories, which is really an admirable position for her. Actually, that's a great position for Amanda Borden. You know, she's been out of uh, commission for a while with injury problems once again. She's just come back onto the scene, a very important year. She's had one international event so far, so this is a big test for Amanda. The voice you'll hear is that of her coach, Mary Lee Tracy. She came about as close as you can get to going to Barcelona when she finished seventh in the all-around at the 92 Olympic trials. And two other gymnasts were questionable, but she was bumped at the last minute and had to watch on TV at home. Amanda's using the same bar routine we've seen her perform over the last couple of years. About a thousand times, <laughs> huh? Double front. <laughs> nice job. I got to tell you, I was one of the naysayers about Amanda Borden a few years ago. I just really didn't think that she was going to be able to hold on. But I tell you, I am so impressed. She's not just hanging on, but I really think she's gotten a lot better. Tim, absolutely. She wants this badly. You know, we were impressed with chatting with her the other day. Her head is on straight. And a great score, a 9.80. She told us yesterday she feels much more pressure this year. Here's another. Young lady with some pressure to bear. 16-year-old Christy Powell from Colorado Springs. She's getting set for the vault. Christy really came on to the international scene when she won the American Cup back in 1995. She'll, do the, she'll do the same vault we saw from Kerry Strug, her second attempt, that full and a half twist. Great vault, a lot of power. Just that small hop on the landing, but she really can boom this one. That's her coach, Tom Forster. You know, Tim, I noticed that in the air, she really needs to clean up her form just a little bit, especially right here. You can see her pike. She throws the one in and half twist quite easily. And again, the landings are so important on the vault. A lot less uh, competitive experience. Uh, her first vault, a 980, which is a respectable score. A lot less experience than some of the other elite gymnasts. Um, and remember, as a 12-year-old, she was one of Bella Caroli's pupils. But she left after two years to pursue what she now calls a new way of coaching. I'm not sure if that's a rip of, <laughs> uh, of, of Bella, but we've heard that before. Planning to do the same second vault again. The start value is out of a full 10.0. She has an intense face. Oh, huge vault. Now, what about that step, though? Big step on the landing, as you said, John, but it was a dynamic vault. She just flew off of that horse. Again, we'll take the highest score from both of those balls as you watch the replay. I think I agree with Tim. This was definitely much better in the air, more powerful. Look at the height. Cranks the one and a half twist, opens up for the landing. Still the step. She's going to have to really work on that. Her first score for the first vault was a 9.80. And a 9.850 for Christy Powell. So that is, so far in this rotation, the highest score we've seen for anyone. 
over to the balance beam again. And this is 14-year-old Jenny Thompson from Wichita Falls, Texas. 11th after the compulsories. Is Shannon Miller's training partner with Steve Nuno. She also has been to Bella's training camp. John, we haven't seen a whole lot of Jenny Thompson. She's also been plagued by injuries. She's making this her comeback year, and it's an important one. She doesn't have a whole lot of time to waste. She has to really build up her reputation. Coming up right here is probably one of the most amazing skills in the competition. She'll do a full twisting back somersault. A lot going on. Oh. oh. I just can't tell you how difficult that is. It is incredible to keep your body perfectly square. And she has hit that skill every day in practice. I have not seen her fall on it yet. You know, Jenny has really been under the gun. Some criticism to her gymnastics are the bent knees and the flexed toes. That's something that she's really worked very hard at. Another tumbling series here, two layouts. She's on. As you mentioned, uh, she's had some bad injuries. Ankle and knee injury. She had, a, she had a screw placed in her heel and a bone chip taken out of her elbow. Her heel actually separated from her foot while she was tumbling. You're hearing Steve Nuno, her coach. That's right. And okay. She'll also do a very difficult dismount. This is a full twisting double somersault. Same dismount as Shannon Miller. Yeah! All right, Jenny! How'd it go, baby? All right! All right, good job! All right, good job! Her first event in the compulsory exercises, she struggled a little bit on the uneven bars. Okay, good job. Probably not a worse place to start, especially when you have a skill like this, that tuck with a full. Look at all that's happening there. And just a little bit off, that leg comes off to the side. That'll be just a tenth of a point deduction. That looks like a move off a high dive or something. <laughs> Jenny score a 9.650 for her beam routine. You know, John, I think that's because of those knees that Elfie was talking about. Time to get our first official look today at the cover girl, Dominique Mochianu on the vault. We spent some time with her yesterday, and I, I think she is... Did you guys think as talkative as any 14-year-old and really very forthcoming for, for a gymnast? They're usually quite quiet. You get a whole lot of information from Dominique. She's quite a treat to, to talk to. Um, she seems a lot more serious this time around. I think she's finally realizing the pressure. And this I, is what it comes down to. And, and there's, that, there's that look in her eyes. It's not quite there. She seems serious, and Bella seems taut. I think she's very much aware that she's going to be part of the great Bella Corolla legacy. Her first fault. It's a nice vault. It's worth a 10.0. She performed it very well. Lots of height. Good twisting action. Again, not a perfect slow landing. Down a little bit in there. Just, just the same rhythm. Hold it out and the snap strong good. Okay. Work it from your arms. Arms more. More yeah, from you know, your arms. You hear what Bella's saying okay. there. Work it from your arms and, and stay down. She has a little Don't bit of a technical down. error when she enters the horse. She hits with what we call a shoulder angle. You'll see it right here. Her arms aren't totally over her head, so she can't get quite the bounce off the horse. See, she has a little bit of an angle there. Doesn't get the same bounce that we saw from maybe Christy Powell a little bit earlier. Let's see if she's got her score here. Her first vault, a 9.750. Now, will she do the same vault? She'll do the same second vault, and to increase that score, she needs to nail the landing. Oh, big step. And you know, Tim, the same problems you spoke of on the first vault happened again. Missed that. Missed that, okay. Go up, put that bar, ready for bar. Yeah, this is not what Bella Caroli wants. Obviously, he's looking for near perfection when you're competing at this level, especially gearing up for the games. But look right here once again, even a bigger angle on the horse. But this is the big problem. Huge hop forward. No way that's going to get a bigger score. Remember, her first score was a 9.75. So, um, yeah, 9.70 for the second ball. So she'll keep that first score. Well, J.C. Phelps is up next. Is a concentration, perhaps a prayer? Uneven parallel bars next for her. The battle to see who will make it to the Olympic trials is just getting underway.
John Tesh with Elfie Schlegel, Beth Ruyak, and Tim Daggett at the U.S. Got National it. Gymnastics Championships. You're watching J.C. Phelps ready to mount the uneven parallel bars. At the 1995 National, she finished a surprising third behind Dominique Monciano and Shannon Miller. Great start for the competition for J.C. This is one of her strongest events. Should be an easy one for her. A couple of great release skills planned. First one right here. She fell on it in warm-up. No problem. This is, of course, one of the last two big competitions before the Olympic Games. There is this, and then the top 14 women will advance to the Olympic trials in Boston later this month. John, a new dismount for JC. She unveiled this at the World Championships in Puerto Rico earlier this year. Great routine. She's right on. JC now trains with Amanda Borden in Cincinnati. I mean, he lost a little bit on the dismount on the step, but it was a very, everything else felt really good. Nice job. Good start, all right? She looks relieved. <laughs> One step closer. Here's that second release from JC. This is a reverse heck. Just a little bit of knees in the air on that. But we'll also get to look at her new dismount. Much more difficult. She needs a little bit more rotation. She'll do a double front. And she adds a half twist right at the end. That's the new part right there. Half twist. Eventually, that'll be a little bit easier for, it is, for her to stick, though, because it's not a blind landing. A 9.80 on the bars, which it, that puts her in the lead ahead of Moshiano and Miller. And that may be the first time she's ever led those two in a, in a major competition like this. Dominique Daz prepares for her bars routine. We should tell you that in the compulsory round, this Olympian had a very rough time of it. We mentioned that earlier. And a 10th place entering these optionals, and she will be digging herself out of a deep hole. This was not a pretty sight for Dominique in the compulsory exercises. There are very specific moves in this routine. There is absolutely no improvising allowed. And that's where it happened. She did an extra giant swing. It's a huge deduction. Those compulsories count a full 60%. And it didn't end there. On this free hip, hecked more form deductions. It was, it was a nightmare for Dominique. Then earlier today, Dominique struggled during practice. She was missing almost everything. You can see it on her face. She spent most of the afternoon in tears. And it's not a great confidence builder for the real thing. And so those are the memories that Dominique Dawes carries into this, her final performance for the all-around competition on the, on the bars, at least. You cannot count her out, though. She was fourth at the Olympic trials in 92. Last year, she finished fourth at the Nationals, and that was with an injured wrist. So we will see here if she can shake it off. John, you're absolutely right. We cannot count her out. This routine has the potential to score big time. It has the potential to win a medal at the Olympic Games. It's that good but I don't know where her head is at. Big combination of skills right here, leading into this very exciting release skill. We'll soon know. Oh, she's got it. That skill was what was giving Dominique all the problems in training earlier. Just the dismount. Boy, the crowd knows it. They've got these little signs with 10 written on what they're holding up. It was just like there was no problem at all for that, Dominique Dawes. That was the old Dominique. She's back. It was spectacular. It was awesome. Thank goodness she woke up from that terrible nightmare this morning, but this was absolutely incredible. The free hip to the high bar in combination to what Tim said earlier, the, one of the most incredible release skills. She does this the best that I've ever seen any athlete perform. Check out the height. Just watch where her hips are relative to the bar. Look at how high she wow. is. 
in the air. That's great. Boy, with a 10th place standing after compulsories, she needs a performance like this. Finally, she's back. This is the type of routine we're used to seeing from Dominique Dawes. She can do this one in her sleep. It was exciting and it was on. Boy, these are, are tricks you would see on the high bar for the men. Well, that's a very good point, John, because the uneven bars are getting closer and closer to men's high bar. They keep making those two bars wider and wider, so it's enabling the athletes to do more and more difficult things. Like this dismount right there, full twisting, double somersault, and boom on the landing. And the score from the judges is a 9.90, one-tenth away from perfection for Dominique Dawes. And that is the highest score we've had in the optionals thus far. I don't think she even knows what the score is. J.C. Phelps, Dominique Mochianu, Shannon Miller, one, two, three, the two veterans chasing the newcomer. We'll be back. Two-time world champion Shannon Miller trying to make it into her second Olympic Games, gets set for her floor exercise, and she is currently in third place. Good catch. While Carrie Strug, her former training partner, will prepare to attack the bars. She, uh, as we have mentioned, has trained with world champions Kim Zameskel, trained with Shannon, and also Svetlana Boginskaya. And this is a very comfortable rotation for Carrie. She started out well on the vault, scored fairly well, and now the uneven bars, one of her strongest events. We'll have a chance to compare the routines. We've already seen Amanda and Dominique. First of two release skills we'll see from Carrie. This is a routine she's been been performing for a very long time. Very comfortable with this one. Here comes Tkachev. Ooh, a little, little split of the legs up on the high bar there. A good routine from, from Carrie, but you know that, that form break you were talking about, Elfie, very, very odd, not on a major skill at all. That was just kind of like a lapse in concentration. You cannot have those at this level. So Carrie Strug looking to make her second Olympic team. She, of course, was on that bronze medal Olympic team in 1992. And a 9.725 for the uneven bars. As Shannon Miller Powerful prepares now, for the Let's go. Remember, a 9.30 on, on the go. beam. Looking Beginning to dig out of that beam. position. Second rotation is Kristen Maloney. <clears throat> Harry Strug, let's go that bar routine. It's Shannon Miller. Everybody turning in, nine on, nines, Sarah. nine eights, nine sevens. This is a huge performance for her right now. We've left Steve Nuno's, her right, coach's mic open. Go, 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 this go, is go. a new tumbling pass. Go, go. Yes! Come on, baby! Legs tight, legs tight. Clean form, form, and good girl, good girl. And yes, beautiful. Take command of it. Beautiful. Resting. Come on, rest it up. Bring it up now. Come on, let's go. Come on, power, Shannon. Bring it up. Bring it up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Yes! It does not get any better than that. That was a great routine. If you think she's not ready for Atlanta, think again. New music, new tumbling, four tumbling passes in this routine. Awesome. And you know, Steve Nuno, Coach Steve Nuno has been telling me Shannon was going to do this mount for five years now. 
Every time we get to the meet, she holds back a little bit, but finally here's a double laid out somersault from Shannon Miller. Pretty darn good. And this was her fourth tumbling pass. Incredible. Remember, she's 19 years old. Takes a lot of adrenaline to get this one around. This was a move she used to start with. Full twisting, double back. But check this out. This was impressive. All right, here's uh, Steve Nuno's reaction on camera. You heard him yell. <laughs> there it is without the sound. I love this guy. As a fellow New Yorker, I just love him. He's <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> There couldn't be a better cheerleader or a better coach, really. A 9.90, another one. Boy, after the 9-3, that is just tremendous. What a great job from Shannon Miller against all odds. As you take a look at our leader, J.C. Phelps. But with scores like those from Shannon, it's gonna, it's gonna be difficult to hang on. We move over now to Christy Powell, who's on the uneven bars. Sixth after the first rotation. She lives in Colorado Springs with her, with her mom. Uh, she is the youngest kid in her family with four brothers. How about that? Hey, Christy is in the hunt to make this national team to move on as the top 14 to the Olympic trials. She's one of those ones that could be on the bubble, but this is typically a great event for Christy. Big troubles on that first release scale. Second scale coming in here, another big release to Kachev. That was beautiful. That's what we're used to seeing from Christie, the height, the distance away from the bar. Nice dismount here, full twisting, double somersault. Just a little bit too much power. Once again, we saw her overdo it on vault and just a little bit too much there as well. Her smile is a, a bit broader this year. I'll explain that in a minute. Go ahead with the Not report. a great routine, John, but the second half was much better than the first half, and it started with that Dikachev move, and she worked her way right into the dismount. Again, great height from the second on the second release skill. Look how high she is on this dismount. That's beautiful. I mentioned her smile. She just got her braces off last week. And uh, while we're on the topic, this young lady, Amanda Borden has been known as Pepsodent for, for her smile and for her exuberance. Our next competitor, Amanda Borden. So here is Amanda Borden on the piece of apparatus that sort of ate Shannon Miller alive. She needs to be focused. A lot of front tumbling in this routine, starting with the mount. Just talking to her the other day, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that she's going to hit this entire competition. She's just so on, she's so confident, she wants this badly. Beautiful series there. Had a little trouble in practice the other day. One of the things that we realized when we spoke to these athletes yesterday is that they are wound so tightly. Chest in, chest in, and up. We asked Amanda a couple of questions, and I don't think I'd be telling a story out of school, but she just burst into tears. So much pressure brought to bear by these championships as we enter the Olympic Games. She's really made the commitment to her gymnastics, to making the Olympic team this time around. And I should mention, it wasn't a tough question. It wasn't, it wasn't a cruel question, was it? It was just, what are you going to be doing after the Olympics? I think she was taking stock of her life. Many of them live away from their parents, training 10 and 12 hours a day. Getting set for a dismount, John. So aggressive. Double back. So aggressive. Needs to stand it up. <laughs> this is one that they are very happy to be done with. So solid. Good job. She's right. It was solid. It was great. It was very solid, and it started with this mount. A blind landing. Remember, just four inches wide. You just have to know exactly where you are. Hips and shoulders exactly in line with that balance beam. She had no problem. Yeah, just jump in the air, flip one time, and land on a four inches of wood like that. No problem. <laughs> and a terrific score for Amanda Borden, a 9.80. Dominique Moshianu currently in second place, and all eyes in her direction. Be back. She has been called the next Nadia, the new Nadia. 14-year-old Dominique Mochianu sits in second place and prepares for her bars routine. 
And the architects of Nadia and of Mary Lou Retton, Bella Caroli, will be right there. Hey. You know, she may be very, very tiny, but there is some smart choreography to this bar routine. The skills that Bella has chosen are huge. They make her look like a giant. Big release to the high bar here. She'll work her way right to the low bar. Oh, boy. That's a mistake. It's going to cost her quite a bit. The key, obviously, though, get your composure back. It's not over. A little bit shaky on her first event. Now she comes to bars, and once again, a little shaky. Big dismount. Double laid out somersault. Oh, beautiful, but... Steps everywhere, Tim. Yeah. Bella has expressed concern about his pupil facing the kind of pre-Olympic buildup and pressure that Kim Zemeskel did. He's really worried about that. That was no good, Donnie. That was no good. That's no good. No, all right. That's the warm up here. That's for the beam, okay? Boy, he calls it tough. Did he say he that said was that was no good? He said it was no good. It was a big mistake, John. And it is very dangerous. And it shows in the score, 9.550 for Dominique. Yes. And with the scores that the other folks have been turning in, that will not stand up. No, that definitely won't stand up. I'll tell you what she was supposed to do. Things started out well. This is a big school, uh, skill called the Shapashnikova. She moves from the low bar to the high bar. Here it is right here. Lots of height, great skill. Now she swings out. She's supposed to do what's called a pack salto, flips down to the low bar, but she's supposed to land in a handstand. She doesn't. Then she does a half skill, obviously, at this point. She's just trying to cover up the best way she knows how in order to get herself back into the rhythm of the routine and back to the high bar. Right at this point, Elfie, your mind is going about a million miles an hour. It's like, where am I? What do I need to do? But one Aggressive. thing, she does get go. back on track. Good posture, tight stomach. Here's J.C. Phelps as she gets set for her beam, beam routine. All right. And you know, you can you feel it out here. You can you hear it in, in the there? stands. In All right. Who is this 16-year-old who is now beating the defending national champions? Let's go down to the gym floor now in Beth Ruya. It's a great night for any great gymnast poised for a national title on her way to an Olympics team. Her family here to cheer her on. We are not talking about Dominique Mociano. We are talking about J.C. Phelps. And even her teammate Amanda Borden says she came from nowhere. And in fact, if you take a look back at 1993, she did because J.C. was 14 and she wouldn't even let her parents come to the arena to watch her compete. Well, I didn't have real good self-esteem after that because I sort of went in and embarrassed myself because I fell all over the place. And I ended up 24th as a junior. Um, I mean, I wanted to quit after that. She had the attitude like, who would want to coach me? I'm only 24th as a junior. We just asked her to please give another coach a try. Warm up your passes on the floor, not in the pit, be ready to go. She wasn't tough. She didn't think she was good. You know, she had no self-esteem. She had no idea how good she was. By the time JC found Mary Lee Tracy, her parents had already changed their lives because of their daughter's talent. Today, JC's family lives apart. Her father and brother in Indiana, she and her mother in Cincinnati. For a while, it seemed, everyone was moving to new homes, and J.C. was lonely and waiting for her mom to move to Cincinnati. She would call every night. About 8 o'clock, she would call, and I guess I didn't even want to answer the phone because she would be sobbing on the other end. I'm just missing us. Okay. So it was, it, was, it was pretty rough. Once I got here, Mary Lee said she changed just like that, just having a parent around. See you tonight. Inside the gymnast, there was still a little girl. This is the apartment close to Mary Lee's gym that JC and her mother live in now. Her brother comes for visits. For JC's gymnastics, 
this is the home that they gave up. You know, it was a nice, nice home we had. Um, it was a, uh, a two-story home out in the country. We had a garden out back and, and apple trees and, and flowers around the house. You always planted flowers, so um, I miss those kinds of things, yeah. Well, I think it's a real honor that my family has the support and the love and the caring that they have for me, but I don't think that really puts pressure on me. I mean, I want to do well because I know all the sacrifices they've made, but I don't put extra pressure on myself because I know whatever I do, they'll, <laughs> they'll back me up whatever I do. Her parents are Jack and Cheryl. That's where she gets the JC. This sport is rough on families. It separates them, it makes them broke, and sometimes it makes dreams come true. JC Phelps has never before been leading the best in the United States, and that's where she is right now as she prepares for her balance beam routine. She starts with a very tricky element, that front somersault onto the beam. Like you said, she hasn't been in this spot before this. It's clutch time. And you know something, Tim? The last time JC did this balance beam routine on the podium was at the World Championships in Puerto Rico, and she fell off. Strength, strength, and up. Near miss on that layout. Actually, I believe she's supposed to do three layouts, but kind of stumbled after that first one just a little bit. Remarkable that she was able to stay on the beam. She always looks so calm and so focused on this event, but this was the move she fell on. Switch coming up very shortly on at the up. World Championships, a front summy. Coming up in this line Stomach, right here. Arms. Same as her mount. Stomach, arms. Up. Dead on. Good. We remind you, there are four events going on at once here. That's why you hear someone's floor exercise Push. playing behind her beam. Handstand. Handstand. The thing that's so great about JC is you see it right here. She has a wonderful line. Great knees, great toes, beautiful form. And she has the skills to go along with all of that. She's a real package in women's gymnastics. Here's a big dismount. Two back handsprings, double back. Her coach knows it, she knows it. So does Amanda Borden. Oh, her dad is still wringing his hands, of course. Legs were shaky on that layout, layout. A 9 7 5 oh, a great score. This should uh, give her that self esteem that her mom believes she once lost in this sport. Well, here where there was a little bit of a problem, she was supposed to do three layouts in a row. Here's the first one, a little shaky on that second foot, but she does manage to hold on to the second layout. Smart move on JC's part, not throwing that third layout. You can hear it in the words she uses to describe her relationship with her parents, honor and sacrifice, and a lady who had lost her self-esteem is now confident. J.C. Phelps still in the lead. 19-year-old Dominique Dawes, currently in seventh place. She faces the balance beam. She knows how to do this. In 1994, the national championships, she won the beam, won the floor, was first in the bars and the vault, and of course, first all round. Big test for Dominique, John. Last year she wasn't prepared physically for these championships. This year it seemed like her mental state was suffering, but she appears to be back on track, and she needs this routine. She's capable of scoring very big like she did on the uneven bars. Back on track that Elfie alludes to is the fact that she just turned in a 9.90 on the uneven parallel bars. Here's the series that she's so well known for. It's a big one. Bronze medalist just recently at the World Championships, which were held in Puerto Rico this year. Double turn, beautiful. And she won that bronze medal on the balance beam, which no, is no, against no, very no, stiff no, international no, competition. No. <laughs> It's 
just remarkable when you remember how bad she was this morning, constantly in tears. Big dismount here from Dominique Dawes. We haven't seen this in a while from her. <laughs> well, a big step, and how much will that cost her? Well, that's going to be at least a tenth, maybe two tenths of a point. The rest of it appeared to be rock solid. But really, the only flaw in the routine did come from that step on the dismount. The rest was absolutely gorgeous. She was on, didn't waver one bit. Great tumbling skills, as we mentioned, but this is a big skill as well. A double turn. She loses sight of the beam. Remember, only four inches wide, two spins, up on her toe, bang, solid. Shades of Betty Aquino, who actually did a triple turn. But and here at, is the dismount. And at last year's championships, she took out the full twist on this part, the double back. Well, it looks like it's back in now. And all of a sudden, the road to Atlanta for Dominique Dawes appeared to be paved with a few less potholes. Her score, a 9.825. And that, along with that 9.9 on the bars, tells us that she is back. As we take a look at the leaderboard after two rotations of four, Dominique Mochianu and Shannon Miller are chasing the young upstart, J.C. Phelps. So what is in the mind of young J.C.? Is she going through her upcoming floor exercise in her mind? Is she imagining herself national champion in this Olympic year? Welcome back to the 1996 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. We're in Knoxville, Tennessee, where Amanda Borden is currently in fourth place. She's getting set for her floor exercise. She's going back to some fun music, a 50s style piece of music that she feels is better suited for international competition. I think it's better suited for Amanda as well, though. Just her overall personality really fits quite well. Come on, buddy. Rotation, that's a point one deduction out of bounds. Come on, light the power. Let it go, come on. Come on, Amanda. Good snap down. Good snap down. Squeeze your stomach. Stand up. Good. Nineteen-year-old Amanda Borden just narrowly missed, as I mentioned earlier, up, going up. to the Olympic Games on, back in 1992. Good job. Good well, obviously, job. the biggest Real error in the exercise was when she went out of bounds there, a little bit too much power. <laughs> just so you folks know at home, though, although Mary Lee Tracy is mic'd, Amanda can't hear her through this exercise, but Mary Lee's sending those vibes out, almost willing her to do it. But she willed her a bit too much power right here, too much rotation. As Elfie said, she steps out of bounds. That's a tenth of a point deduction. And her score of 9.650 would have been a 9.750 had she not uh, stepped out. So Amanda, as I mentioned, currently in fourth place. And while she was on the floor exercise, Christy Powell was performing on the balance beam. So here's a look at her routine. And you know, John, the pressure's not just on the top athletes here at this competition. Christy is in that crucial position, sixth place. It's not just enough for her to be in the top 14 heading to the trials. She wants to secure a spot in the top six. And you have to remember, Elfie, that if you are number eight, 
at the Olympic trials in Boston, you don't go to the Olympic Games. That's exactly what happened to Amanda Borden, who was seventh. And then two athletes were questionable, and at the last minute, they were back in. Those Great. athletes were petitioned onto the team. In 1992, USA Gymnastics is doing everything in their power to try to eliminate that from happening in 96. The producers of TV shows like Christy Powell. She portrayed Nadia Comaneci in an HBO special while she was training at Bella Carolis. Big element coming up right here. Very risky. Ooh. Oh! Ouch. Jeez. And there is absolutely no room for error when you're doing a skill such as that. Shoulders and hips in line as she was not. That's basically a fall on the balance beam, so. Falling off, falling on, same deduction. Major deduction. Big concern, she needs to stand this dismount up. Well, how can you concentrate after a fall like that? Well, exactly right, you know, it kind of just knocks you right off your game, literally. It's in combination with this jump into a full twisting backflip. Chest roll, but way off to the right side of the beam. You can see her fighting to stay on, but again, it's just reiterate, like falling just off. Just like falling off. 0.5. Here's Jenny Thompson, who will be vaulting. You see there, she's in eighth place. 9.075 for Christy Powell. John, Jenny's been having a really good competition thus far. Her scores have been good this year in all her competitions. As I said, she's really trying to move up the ladder. But a simple vault, this vault value, you can see right there, is only out of a 9.8. Yeah, this has really been Jenny's biggest um, nemesis, the vault. A little slow the coming vault. to the horse, and that's why you're a little on the front of the horse, okay? You're a little too hollow, and that's why you took the step. Make sure that if you're on the front of the horse, just straight body. Well, you I'm going to make a decision we're here based on the score. A lot of okay? athletes, we're, we're listening to Steve Nuno, we're going to make the decision when he sees the score. Okay. A lot of the athletes are using run. the first ball throw, almost as a warm-up. They get going, one in the bag and they know that it's okay? they can live with that ball. score and then they try something a little bit more difficult, a little bit more risky because they can always fall back on the first score. This but this score was at 9.475. Yeah, this really wasn't a great vault. She didn't get her hands to the hoard quickly. She has to pike down in the air in a big step. And form it's deductions and half, in yes. the air during the twist, Tim. We have to remember that. The legs were not perfectly straight. Now, she's going to go for Come a much on, more difficult vault. And the luxury of this competition, the rules say she can take the best of the two. Come on, Jenny, get it up there. Come on, girl. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yes! All right! <laughs> Hello, girl. Steve That's Nuno is busy after right. cheerleading and, and coaching for Shannon Miller, That's and now he's with Jenny. Well, she went with the bigger vault. Big right. smile at the end. That's Value is worth a 10.0, so she added That's the extra twist training. and a bigger score. And she's another one who used to train with Bella Caroli as we see him warming up. Dominique Mociano, she is next. Stay with us. She has been described as part Retin, part Wait. Nadia, both former protégés of Bella Caroli. This is Dominique Mociano. She seems much older than her 14 years. All right. You know, last year she had a fixed smile on her face. She had that fire in her eyes. You just knew she was going to win this event. I don't see it this time around. It's almost a scared, worried, just not sure about this routine which would describe the demeanor of Bella as well, as you see him in the center of your screen there. Big tumbling series here, three layouts in a row. She's solid on that one. When we talk to Bella, he says to us, and I quote, I can see in front of me what I saw when Nadia was a little girl. It is frighteningly similar. Just a small check on that ending of her front tap. This is a pretty veteran-like performance, though, right here. 
you know, I mentioned earlier in the program the pressure that this little girl has, and, and you have to use those words again, little girl, because at 14, I don't know too many 14-year-olds who are on the cover of fashion magazines. Let's, re let's remind everybody about the shin splint. She is suffering a, a nagging injury, and who knows how much that's playing on her mind. Just the dismount. Stay. That's a relief. Welcomed off the podium by Marta Caroli, her beam coach. The only major mistake in the exercise was that hop on the landing, but I love this right here. It's maybe not all that difficult, but this is what gymnastics really needs. It needs some different stuff. And I guarantee you, you'll have a, a couple of seven-year-olds trying to do that probably on the <laughs> edge of your table, so. Watch out at home, Mom. She gets it naturally. Dominique's parents were born in Romania, where her dad, Dimitri, was a member of the junior national team, and her mom was a level 10 gymnast. Of course, she capped off the routine with this round of double tuck dismount. Relatively easy for Dominique. Sends it fairly Mom. high, one. looks for the landing. Small hop. Have to clean that up. Let's see what we have for a score here. See her taping her shins there and her ankle. A 9.80, so a good score. Okay. Now it's time for J.C. Phelps, half, yes. who finds herself in the enviable, and for her, the unusual position of being our leader. And you know, she is well equipped to deal with this. Come the on, first Kate. thing that struck me when I saw J.C. Phelps was how cool a competitor she was. She competed in her first world championships. It was one of her first major competitions. She did fantastic. So she knows how to deal with the pressure. Good. Come on, Jace. Push through. Push through. All right. Come on, Jace. Come on, buddy. Nice face. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on. Come on. Patience. Feel the floor. Feel the floor. Patience. That's all right. Come on. Come on. I think the coaching is as entertaining <laughs> as the performance. It always is. You know, John, you talked about her being in a great position leading this competition, but I guarantee you one thing, she has no Good idea job, where Jace. she is Good at this point job. in time. She's just out there to do what she does in the gym every single day. I think it would be too much pressure for them all to know with uh, Shannon and Dominique and, and JC all locked in that, that three-way race. Well, you have to remember in gymnastics, there's no defense, only offense. You don't really need to know what your competitor is doing. Here's a double front somersault. Very difficult because it's a blind landing. She lands a little bit hard on that, actually. Mary Lee asked her after the routine, you're back okay? And no problem. And a 9.8, which should keep her in the lead. It would be so huge if you could come out on top at the end of this competition. The National Championships is a place to lock in routines that will be used for the Olympic Games. And we will now see Dominique Dawes lock in her new floor exercise routine. And gone are the trademark tumbling passes that we've been so used to seeing Dominique perform the back-to-back -back tumbling. But I think you'll be happy with her choice. This is a big first pass.
It is hard to believe this is the same athlete that we saw earlier today warming up. The crowd loves it. Dominique Dawes. I sure would like to know what she did from this morning. You know, what made her famous was the back-to-back -back tumbling passes that we got so used to seeing. The crowd loved it. We loved it. It was awesome. But she's chosen the double layout for her first tumbling run, and it was a great one. Perfectly laid out. Excellent. You know, the night before the competition began, I saw Dominique. There's a big fountain where the athletes are staying. She took a penny from her pocket, closed her eyes, and made a wish and threw it in. Well, maybe she was only worried about optionals, and it's coming through now. When she was little, she would write three words on a mirror right before a meet. Determination, dedication, and dynamic, and a 9-8-5-0. So ever since the bars, she's been turning in great scores. Shannon Miller, the most decorated American gymnast in history, is fighting to unseat a new face. Miller is next. As Shannon Miller prepares for the vault, Carrie Strug is on the beam. She has been a part of five World Championships teams, 91, 92, 90. Oh! oh ouch. And she missed the whole beam. That was a new mount for Carrie, too. She's lucky she didn't hit her face on it. It was very close. Once again, we say it all the time, but after a fall like that, get back on track for four elements in a row. She better be. It got very quiet in here until that very moment. Carrie has for so long been in the shadows of all of the great ones. Former world champion Kim Zameskel, a training partner, then Shannon Miller. Just never seemed to break out on her own this year winning the American Cup. And now training with the cover girl, Dominique Mochianu. In fact, it's just the two of them in that gym with Bella now. Yeah, actually, I found that very interesting. They are all alone in all of their training. Bella, Marta, Carrie, and Dominique. That's it. No radio, no nothing. Lots of attention, just to dismount. Hey. Ooh. Another substantial mistake. Yeah, you hear Bella in the background. He said, stay. He keeps telling Gary, he's been telling her for years, bend your knees, you stay run. down. You she always bounces out of the landing. You to have to stay. There you, you go. stay and go. I you lost the interior, you know. No, all right. Actually trying all right. to stick before Let's she go even back. lands. Let's go That's a good floor, okay? Common mistake. No. A rough performance for Carrie Strug. Over on the other side of the gym is Shannon Miller, who is just behind J.C. Phelps. A straight body over the top, stuck. Who had a dismal beam with a 9-3 and then came back Come with a now, rousing floor ride. exercise performance. Steve Nuno at the other end of this runway, coaching her on. That was incredible. That's how you do that one. <laughs> You're right, Steve. That's exactly how you do that one. She, she knows it, and she's trying to be humble. It's not working. <laughs> okay, that was just a warm-up. I need more power. She looked like a little... Listen, listen, listen no listen holding back. Let's get it down there. Let's nail it, okay? Up and over the top. Stick it, okay? Up and over the top now. Like you're doing it in the bit. Let's get it up and over the top. Let's change the vault. This report just in. She has lost partial hearing in her right ear. <laughs> John, that, those were important words right there because she's planning to do something totally different for her second vault. This vault's only out of a 9.9. .9, so she needs to get the maximum out of this vault, and she sure comes close to doing that. She looked a little great. bit like a lawn dart. Big that ball now, Shannon, come on. She has a 9.8 in the bank. Get it up, get it up, get it, get it, get it. Come on, get it. Yeah! Wow. Strong, strong landing. That a girl. That a Polite girl. applause right. from J.C. Phelps, oh, who's waiting for the score. Grips on right away. Let's go. Steve had a double right, cappuccino on. this morning. <laughs> <All right. laughs> a 9-9-0 for Shannon Miller. I didn't think she could do any better than that 9-8, but Beautiful. that's incredible. Well, Shannon Miller is back. Point zero five zero right. separates her from J.C. Phelps. Mochiano is still in third place.
Dominique Mochianu finds herself in third, chasing two fantastic gymnasts. From the campus of the University of Tennessee, Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, we're here from 1996 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. And the United States defending champion at 14 years old is Dominique Mochianu, who finds herself in third place behind Shannon Miller. And there are her parents, Dimitri and Camelia, both from Romania. John, a brand new floor routine, and she's expected to do a brand new, very difficult first tumbling pass. The question now is, will she be able to defend her title? Well, if she has the shot to do that, she has to be basically flawless. The crowd loves it, Bella loves it. Well, you know, John, it was a great, great routine, but I just don't think it's gonna be quite enough to overtake Phelps and Miller at this point in time. Like I said, it was, it was really dynamic. I think she needed to do the bigger first tumbling pass. She was supposed to do the same thing J.C. Phelps did, a handspring double front, but goes back to her old tumbling pass, still very difficult, but maybe to bring in that huge score, she just needed something a little bit extra. Brand new floor team. Did you catch the title? Devil went down to Georgia. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. She has choreographed this so well. Great facial expressions. They're going to love it. It will be perfect for Atlanta. Yeah, and to put things, like in, and put things in perspective for you, J.C. Phelps, who is in the lead right now, is still to go on the vault. And Shannon Miller is still to go on the bars. So this will have to be a huge score. This is a tumbling pass that the audience just loves because she bounces out of this move. <laughs> the most attitude we've seen so far today. Yeah, yeah she looks like a 14-year-old, right? A 9.8. I doubt, I'm surprised I would have expected a little bit more. Floor team wasn't difficult enough. She really needed that more difficult first tumbling pass. The start value was only a 9.9. .9. That's what she was working from. So with one last performance, J.C. Phelps finds herself in first place. Actually, Our two performances. Will be the ball and the ball. On the board. On the board. But you have to remember that J.C. has to hit here. Come on, J.C. She can't go out there and blow this vault or she's definitely out of the competition. She still has to hit. Here's a family who Come has on, sacrificed Jay. so much for her to get here today. She only sees Come her on, dad Jay. maybe every weekend, maybe other, every other weekend. They've put their family in hock to pay for her training. We haven't seen too many vultures in the competition today stick their landings. That's going to be a crucial factor for the American team. This vault's out of a 10.0. One small thing. Let's work on the landing. On the board. Just tighten up your legs. If that tightens up, the rest is going to be right there. 
look out there and get ready for it and then show it. All right? You know what? She's got one in the bank. She has absolutely nothing to lose. She took a couple little steps on the landing. She should be going 100% to stick this landing. Looks like her dad is cheering her on. Boy, this has got to be tough waiting for this. Shannon's come on, Jay. still to come on the bars. Come on, Jay. It's a 9 7 2 5, so it's not a terrific score. Well, the door is come definitely on, open, one, but Jay. she has a second chance. Remember, it's the best vault of the two. Come on, Jay. She sticks come the on, landing. You can guarantee the score will go up. Same vault. Oh, right. big step. Yeah. No better, worse, I think. All right, all right. <laughs> you feel the nerves? Hey. So, you know, I think that's going to be enough Great. to overtake Dominique Moshianu, but trial, that right? really, really opens the door for yeah, Shannon Miller right there. Good job, buddy. Who would have thought she'd even be time. this high up at this point? Good job. You know that she has no idea what position she's in in this competition. She's just concentrating on sticking this landing. Lot, a lot more height, very stretched out, but really forced. Quite a substantial step on the landing. The score for the second vault of 9-7-0, but the good news is she will keep that first score of 9-7-2-5. That ensures her at least a second place finish. We'll have to see what Shannon Miller does. But first, Dominique Dawes with her final performance, and she is also on the vault. And remember, that sixth place is in conjunction with her compulsory scores because today she's been on fire. Her optionals have been exceptional. Right, she started in 10th place after compulsory. That's the old Dawes that we all know and love. She is just amazing on this apparatus. When she puts her mind to it, there's no stopping her. This is a one and a half twist, a 10-0 vault, lots of height, lots of power, opens up, she's right there. So at this point, Dominique is not a factor for the top three positions. The 9-7-7-5 for her first ball. She gets one more shot at it. But it is incredible that she has climbed out of 10th place. And you know, with the top 14 advancing to the Olympic trials, this is an important meet for her. A big confidence builder. What do you think, better? It looked about the same as the first ball. Carbon copy. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> a bittersweet day for her, but the sweetness came with the four rotations that she's just been through and did a tremendous job, Dominique Dawes. Yeah, I would say that she definitely won this round of competition. So the same score, 9 7 7 5. We'll have to see what her final position will be. And speaking of positions, Shannon Miller can win it all or she can take second. Her fate and that of J.C. Phelps is next. <laughs> Here at the United States Gymnastics National Championships, it's Nuno and Miller. Steve Nuno, Shannon Miller, these two have been an amazing team. All the world, national, and Olympic medals they've come away with. 9.775 on the uneven parallel bars, her last routine would give her the championship. If she can't get that, it will go to J.C. Phelps. And the pressure is not only to perform right here, right now, but how will the risk take it? top of the show we saw Shannon in tears and that was tears of pain so Come far on. no problem up, here now. though regal later and straight buddy straight 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 yeah What an amazing performance after that 9.3, the disaster on the beam, and then the rest of the meet for her has been perfect. Thought it was downhill after the balance beam routine, but it just got better and better, and this routine was fantastic. I think she's wrapped this one up, John. Keep this number in your mind, 9.775, as the judges put their scores together. That's what she needs to be the national champion, and J.C. Phelps will wait along with her as we take a look at one of the replays. Absolutely incredible routine. The form was bang on. The skill level was very, very high. This is one of the moves that Shannon made famous. In fact, it's called a Miller. It's a giant swing into a hop full, right up on the bar, 
after this giant swing, and then she moves into her release skill. And you'd think this would cause a lot of problems on her wrist, but you know, I don't think she was thinking about that wrist injury during this routine. Great combination right there. Well, you know, the thing that really impressed me about this routine was the dismount. As of late, she has really been struggling, actually stopped doing this dismount, couldn't get two flips around anymore. But this is amazing. Double laid out somersault. And the truly amazing thing is, is she really shouldn't have made it, but she just drives those feet to the ground, and it's a great landing on top of it. And the score. We all, a 9.850, so Shannon Miller has done it. 1996 national champion entering the Olympic Games, and look at her, she doesn't know yet. Yeah, I don't she think has Steve no knows idea. Yet. It's fun. It's fun, you know what it is? He's saying it's fun. There's a smile. You thought, it, you thought it was going to be a lousy me there, but it wasn't going to any fun, you know? There you are. We tried too hard to not have any fun today. As soon as you find out, Shannon, it's going to be even more fun than that. We continue now with Carrie Strug, who we set for her floor exercise. Remember, the last thing we saw was the balance beam routine where she took that terrible fall off the top of the routine. She really needs to end this on a high note. No, today. Great way to finish it for Carrie Strug. You know, John, the Carrie old may have been rattled after that balance beam routine, and it could have very likely affected her floor exercise routine, but she's mature enough was, now to so just high, blow it just off. Stuck it. <laughs> there it goes again. Bella talking about that last landing. Carrie, bend your knees, stay down. <laughs> you know, she obviously wasn't vying for the title, but you have to remember in just a few weeks down the road, those bottom spots to make that Olympic team are just important for these athletes as those top spots. But here's the only problem, as we talked about, bend the knees, Carrie. The score for Carrie Strug is a 9.850. And as far as we know, Shannon Miller still doesn't know she's won the title. Let's go down to Beth Ruyak. Beth. Shannon, congratulations by five one hundredths, a national championship. Oh. <laughs> That's the first I've heard. <laughs> Tell me about the fight for this one. Um, well, I started off pretty rough. I had a rough new routine and a miss, so I had to really come back. But mainly I was trying to focus on doing all my new skills, and they all came out well, so it's good. Tell me about going into those vaults and how you were talking yourself through it and making sure you'd be solid. Um, well, mainly I was focusing on hitting the first one, because if I did the first one well, then I got to throw my new one, which was the one and a half twist. So I was excited about that. Are you surprised to be fighting back for this championship? Um, I made a mistake, so, I mean, not really. <laughs> you can't make a mistake, really. We'll see you in Boston. <laughs> I'll be there. You can make a mistake, isn't that the truth? A mistake in Boston can mean you watch the Olympic Games on TV. Dominique Moshianu made a couple of mistakes, came in as defending national champion, and finishes a respectable third with more valuable experience on the road to Atlanta. More gymnastics coming up. J.C. Phelps needs to get herself a T-shirt that says, Who knew? because who knew that she would finish second just behind Shannon Miller. Now she gets to watch her training partner, Amanda Borden, on the vault. Amanda has been in fourth place the entire competition, and you know she has fought for this spot. 
the entire competition. It's great. Great to see her here. All right, good job. Amanda actually completed an internship this year with a TV station where she had her own interview segment. They put it on the air. It's called Amanda's Angles. She says that uh, since working in broadcasting, she wants to be a physical therapist. <laughs> she said it was a rough experience for her that she would go and do an interview and then she had to transcribe the whole thing, which was, uh, she's had a horrible experience. So she'll be helping people get over their injuries from now on. <laughs> John, this was a pretty vault. Check out the position in the air. Look at the height. Beautiful pike. But you know, it's not that difficult. It's only out of a 9.8. At 19 years old, she's one of those veterans, if you will, that Tim and I were talking about. 9.625 for her first vault. Where years ago, you'd be washed up as a gymnast. She's going to try to do the same exact vault, but just try to do a little bit letter, better landing. All right, what do you think? A little bit better, but still a big hop. I'll let the judges make the call on this one. Save that one. What? Save that last one. Oh, so yeah. So her coach likes the last one. What a way to set yourself up, you know? That's true. What a way to set yourself up for the Olympic trials in Boston, uh, three weeks away. A hug from the two training Everybody partners, a 9 6 -0 for that second ball. Here's Beth. Dominique, tell me your feelings about the meet tonight. Well, it was exciting coming back in nationals, competing optionals and everything. And it was a good practice meet for the upcoming events and hopefully get better. How do you feel about walking away here and not having a championship, but everything riding on the trials coming up ahead? Well, I'm looking forward to trials, and this is just a one step ahead and looking forward for the upcoming events. Was it a real competitive night for you? Probably it was. Everybody's getting, you know, up there at the top. Everybody wants to be at the top, and everybody's working hard. And it's a fight up there, but it's going to be better coming up and training hard. And so, Good luck. Thanks. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you, Beth. At the same moment Amanda Borden was vaulting earlier, Christy Powell was on the floor exercise. Let's take a look at her now. She will be the last that we will see on floor. On floor exercise. Remember, the last time we saw Christy was on the balance beam. She had that terrible fall, and this is a must-hit situation for her. This is the performance, the same routine she used to win the American Cup. Christy Powell, I'll say it again in the what if category. If she performs like this and all things were to remain the same, she also would be going to the Olympics if she performed this way at the Olympic trials. Here's a look at the final standings. Carrie Strug in fifth, Christy Powell is in sixth, Dominique Dawes in seventh, and Shannon Miller once again our national champion. We'll be back with a word with JC Phelps, but first let's send you back to New York and Marianne Grabovoy. Here's a look at the final standings, and these are the 14 young ladies who will compete at the end of the month in Boston. And at that time, only the top seven will qualify for a trip to Atlanta in the Centennial Olympic Games. And what about J.C. Phelps, whose family sacrificed their livelihood to watch her succeed beyond their dreams? Here's Beth with J.C. That's a pretty big smile. A couple hundredths of a point separating you and Shannon tonight. What are you walking away with here tonight? 
Um, well, I, I don't really know what, how close we are. I don't look at the scores during the meet, but I'm really proud of my performance, and I think I did well. Were you watching your competition, though, through the meet and knowing that you two were fighting for first and second? Um, I, I don't like to look at the scores, so um, it just puts that much more pressure. So I was just thinking about what I had to do, and I, I still don't know where I am. <laughs> how does second place at Nationals feel to you? Feels great. I was third last year, and I moved up. Ready to look ahead? Yeah. We'll see you in Boston. Thanks. J.C. Phelps, remember the name, you will hear it again. No American woman has ever won more gymnastics medals than Shannon Miller. And today, chasing this championship from second and third place, she proved she is indeed America's finest. It's been our pleasure bringing you the pictures and the drama from these championships. And in 21 days, we will return to bring you the next step along the road to Atlanta, the Olympic trials of gymnastics. For Elfie Schlegel, Beth Ruyak, and Tim Daggett, I'm John Tesh saying so long for now.